Well, so far, we've gotten up to just using a tiny bit of arithmetic on our lower level diagonalizer, but we'll get past that pretty soon. In that the control slot of phi one, we apply that to our kind of standard input in the phi one slot omega naught, and then we apply that to two. We saw that we, we I introduced some abbreviations that you, you want to remember that these things are incredibly powerful. Uh, and we worked out just a little bit of how we get this kind of little bit of uh, fairly ordinary arithmetic, but on very powerful objects, still in an iterations uh, exponent slot of the very powerful W, which is the sort of base level diagonalizer in phi one, and then applied to a pretty decent start. That creates the control exponent you put in two. Whew, okay. Well, if we put in, this of course two is our lowest level thing that doesn't just completely collapse. Clearly, if we put in three or four, it's going to be a lot more intricate. We'll skip those though. Um, and so now it's time to make the, the next bold leap. And we'll probably have to backtrack and fill in some steps in terms of getting sort of moderately explicit calculations, which I like to do. And we finally do what I was hinting at a few videos ago, which is we're going to introduce gadgets that are functions now with domain big omega one. So we've, we've filled out a lot of uh, examples of things in Omega-1. These are things that I've been loosely calling function gadgets, and they've been built <clears throat> out of functions with domain being the integers, omega naught, and successor, and then alternate those two operations. And so those are the Omega-1 gadgets. It's the kind of stuff that we've, that's been placed into that control slot of a, of a phi naught. Um, but what if you just repeat the idea like why can't there be a function with domain big omega one and let's build out some new higher level of gadget it's it there's ways in which they are kind of significantly more um fun and more complicated in a fundamental sense but it's really an extension of the same idea it's just functions are functions that's great um then of course we're also going to let them have be successor tagged and so they're going to fill out start to fill out what's called omega-2. So that's the next level of this hierarchy of technically where we're creating the hierarchy of tree ordinals. So, but you don't have to think about it that way. Uh, first one is, well, if you if you think about big omega-1, the set of function slash successor gadgets, that's going to have an identity function on it. We're going to call that little omega-1, just exact analogy with little omega-0, little omega-0. And so those are totally going to be legal control inputs for phi one. We don't have to rename our phi yet. Um, in general, if you have any gadget that takes an input in omega one, and it can have an input in this brand new omega two, which we've literally only named one element of, but there will be more. Um, and if beta is an omega one gadget, then we define this by diagonalizing. We're going to say if alpha is this new, somewhat more powerful gadget that actually has inputs in the omega one level, then phi one of alpha beta just says, okay, diagonalize. Feed whatever that beta is in here, also into the alpha in the first slot. So the simplest example is when this is a little omega one, and it's just the simplest basic kind of diagonalization, um, which is, hey, why not feed beta into both slots of phi one. This totally makes sense. That's pure diagonalization. Of course, it's going to be even more powerful when this is a more complicated gadget in our brand new omega two level, but we'll see what happens. Now, got to admit, the very first application, which is pure diagonalization, sort of on top of the diagonalizer we already have, let's see what happens. So we're going to put it into a phi naught with input n, of course. We're going to set up a phi one, and then we're going to have omega one here and our standard input omega naught. Well, by definition, that just puts the omega naught in two slots, but we were already doing that. So that was kind of that uh, intermediate level kind of not full diagonalization. But this is, this is remember, was something that was still able to interestingly diagonalize when given the n exponent. So it's literally not new. It's not just not shocking or not light years beyond. It's literally not new. But as usual, successor comes to the rescue. What if we just go the very next thing, omega one plus one? By definition, of course, 
that's going to be take our new brand spanking new phi1 of omega1 dot gadget. We're going to iterate it omega naught times on omega naught, and then eventually feed into an n and feed an n into the whole thing. Oh well, actually, let's feed that in right away because that omega naught in the iteration exponent is waiting to get an input. Okay, let's see how good that is. Well, at the two level, um, what are we going to get? Uh, we're going to get phi one. We're going to start with the omega naught. And we're going to do the phi one of omega one gadget twice on it. So that's the inner level. And then we do phi one of the omega one gadget again on that. This is going to start to look kind of familiar. You get phi one of omega naught omega naught, but then that thing put into the first slot of a phi one as well. Well, we hadn't we hadn't done that yet, right? The biggest thing we'd put into here was just a little bit bigger than omega naught, and now we've got an automatic way to say, hey, this is going to just force us to put in a much bigger omega naught level gadget into the first slot of this V1, which we're using as the, con the creator of a control argument. And of course, I have an abbreviation for the this pretty powerful gadget here. That's my bold W naught. So that's abbreviating a little bit, but really, this is kind of better because it gives you even the tiniest, tiniest, bigger hint uh, that this is super powerful. Let's go ahead and see what happens with three. Okay. Okay. Well, it's that binary tree expansion thing that we saw way back when, when we first started diagonalizing. But now, of course, it's at a different level. So you take omega naught, you phi one omega naught it, then you take that, then put that into both slots into a phi one, and you take that, and you put it into both slots of an outer phi one, and then finally you are gonna get your fully created control argument, and then we'll put in, of course, a number three at the phi naught level. So again, if you want to uh, abbreviate it a little bit, then that makes it look shorter. But the real nature of it is a little bit more explicit here, where we're getting that binary tree. Um, explode well not explosion exactly but it's pretty significant that you get this kind of exponential number of omega naughts in this nested structure so that if this was a hundred okay that's going to be or whether if if this was a hundred you're going to get a uh, a pretty big thing okay so let's actually let's think about this a little bit before we kind of dive into the, the gory details so as I said previously, the the biggest v1 control argument was just a measly omega naught plus two. We have we really have made a big leap, um, and because we've already gone now to where, in that v1 control argument, it's a much bigger gadget. Uh, so we might need to go back and fill in uh, more of these kinds of examples. Moderately big omega naught arithmetic, like to the omega naught or tetration or a little bit beyond tetration level arithmetic done on omega naught inside a phi one and then applied to omega naught none of those are going to be uh, remotely as big as this guy uh, so we might need to to think about that depends on how explicit i want to be um okay and this is actually a really important milestone when we get to this gadget here where the input is omega naught, we're using the phi one level function, and we're using just a tiny bit of successor uh, on top of the new diagonalizer. Turns out um, in uh, Wainer's paper, slow growing and fat versus fast growing, he mentions that this is where we hit the gamma naught level. By definition, that is where you've maxed out what are called the one variable Veblen functions in the, the ordinary theory of uh, fancy ordinal arithmetic. And in terms of uh, functions you'll hear about from, for example, from my previous video series, this is where we match the uh, Harvey Friedman's famous tree function, which can be ex expressed in pretty simple terms. It's a little bit of a weird construction, but in terms of like games on, on mathematical trees, famously, famously fast growing function, just super incomprehensibly fast growing. And this gamma naught is a big ordinary ordinal, which packs a huge punch. And we've got it in this 
what I think is a very, very elegant way. We just got used to the fast growing function in its usual form. Uh, we recognize that we want to put functions into the first slot. And then we figured out, oh, there's this V1, which is basically exactly the same definition as the fast growing function was at the start, albeit with some cleverness about what iteration means. And then you apply it to something just a very, very natural analog of what we had um, quite a while ago. Um, so it's just, it doesn't require any fanciness about, um, about ordinals. You just have to know what functions and iteration uh, are, and then just apply it with sort of a massive amount of recursion and diagonalization. Um, technically speaking, what we're at is the lowest level. If you wanted to, if you want to express this and kind of map this as directly possible over to the stuff I was doing sort of in the middle of the other series and what you see in a lot of descriptions of this, this is the lowest level of using ordinal collapsing functions. Um, so it can totally be replicated with that. And it's not even the, uh, at all a high level of that story, but that story is pretty hard to understand. Um, and this doesn't use any of that uh, terminology. Okay, so I think I'll make this a little shorter, um, but I'll just advertise that what we'll do in the next video is we'll actually start to grunge this out. Why the heck not? That's why we're all here. Um, what happens when we actually look at a tiny, 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 tiny bit of this expansion? Um, and then, of course, we will press forward to bigger and better things.